Hello photography friends, Eugene Nekovietsky with MPhoto here for another wonderful interview. I'm very excited to introduce our next guest to you. All the way from Melbourne, Australia, we have award-winning, internationally recognized wedding photographer, Mario Kintami. Mario, hello, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just a little more about Mario before we get started. As I mentioned, he is a numerous award-winning wedding photographer. He's won awards in the US, UK, Australia. He has locations all around the world, New York, Sydney, Melbourne. He really does it all. He's known for his unique and powerful style with his wedding photography. And so, Mauro, what do you say? Let's just jump right into this, huh? You go for it. Okay. Let's jump to the back, or let's jump yeah. back in, uh, to the beginning of your career, Mauro. And how did you get started? with photography? Well, this is probably the most frequently asked question and I always say that photography found me. Um, at the age of 13, I took my first photograph and I entered it in mm -hmm. a competition and it won me an award. And I was hooked ever since from the first photo I ever took. So um, basically school photography from the age of 13 and I've never looked back, photographed my first wedding at 17 and a half years of age. So, and never looked back after that. Okay, so you entered a competition and it's it just basically launched your whole career. And let's fast forward to today, as I mentioned in the intro, you've won many, many awards. So since we're here now, let's just touch on that. What can you share to our viewers? Like what is the value of getting involved in photography competitions and events such as that? Well, look, I guess, um, good thing about competitions, and I think it's different for everybody, so I guess I can speak for myself, is, is more the fact that it does give you a lot more drive. Um, I think the idea of people knowing that, um, you know, an image of yours is of a, a good standard or of a high standard and you can mix it with the best in the world, I think that's always great. It gives you a lot of passion um, and a passion to strive to get better every year. And once you do start winning silvers or bronzes or anything along those lines, it's always great for you to know that you can mix it with the best. So as you sort of climb that ladder, in a way, you're sort of expected to keep winning some awards. So it gives you a little bit of pressure. I like pressure. I like working under pressure. I like the fact that people expect a certain standard. Now, you can sort of think like that for, for um, awards, but you need to think even more so like that for your couple. The expectations on your couple, they're hardworking people and they're spending good money with you. So, you know, the same expectations you would have on yourself for awards, um, the brides and grooms would have for you. So they sort of marry in, into each other is, is basically, you know, uh, my thoughts. So they work well together. Okay, so something that uh, photographers should definitely look into to help better their craft and things like this. Okay, now Mara, you started again, like you said, 17. Uh, now you jump forward to today, you have this incredible brand uh, in studio designed by Mara. How would you describe this brand and the style that you have? Well, that's a, a good question. Um, I, I guess the style, uh, the way I would describe the style is avant-garde, edgy, mm -hmm. um, technicolor, multicolor, um, but very mm -hmm. unique. Um, to itself, you know, um, mm. the style itself is not for everybody. And I think that's the key element at the moment is to really stand out above the rest um, mm -hmm. in whichever way possible, whether it's your color, whether it's your technique. So at the moment, I, I think probably the best way for me to describe the style is avant-garde, very different. Okay. And walk us through the kind of evolution process of when you were kind of just started picking up the camera, you just picked up the camera from the beginning days all the way to where you are now. Kind of walk us through how you got to where you are now. Well, firstly, you've got to remember I'm what, 49 or 48 still. So it's been 31 years from, you know, from the time that I photographed my first wedding. Um, I didn't have the liberties of YouTube and the internet and so forth. So the first 10 years of what I did was pretty much the, the school of hard knocks. It was mm. an industry where you sort of learn as you go. Um, it mm. was a very healthy industry um, in my first mm. 10 years. Um, this, so the first 10 years, I would regard um, uh, the studio finding itself. The second uh, decade was where the studio really launched its brand. It sort of took on its own new style um, and went with it and never ever actually looked at the market trends and actually went the opposite way to the market trends because there's no doubt what you need to do these days to survive is to create a niche market for yourself. 
I think that's mm. where a lot of photographers um, need to look back at their work and maybe not pay attention so much to what every everyone else is doing and creating mm. creating their own unique market where obviously you do have a response from couples that it is a good good uh, type of style and work from mm -hmm. there. So that was the second decade. The third decade, um, which I feel has been the best decade for the studio, is refinement. So mm -hmm. um, when you consider the studio on its on you know, between twenty to thirty years, I can honestly say that we've refined our marketing, marketing, our photography, mm -hmm. our style, our branding. So you know, after the third decade, guys, it's there's no excuse for anyone. I, I believe after thirty years of doing something. Um, mm -hmm. This is where you can really home in on your brand and product and having the knowledge over a lot of other studios. So that's probably the last decade now for us where we're still going. Mm -hmm. There's a last decade. They're probably, might, I'm hoping that there's a, uh, there's a, a fourth decade. But, um, you know, I think the element of refinement and marketing for the third decade mm -hmm. was the most important, no doubt. Okay. What would you say to a photographer who expects to reach a high level of success in a very short amount of time? Um, anything's possible, guys. You put your mind to it, you can do it. There's no doubt about it. It's whether you have the energy for it. So I can only go okay. back on my first decade where I was working 80 to 90 hour weeks, double to what wow. everyone else was doing. Now that set me up. I did really well. But I paid the price. You know, I wasn't going out with my friends, obviously, because they were always partying, having a great time. Okay. I spent my whole time working. So, mm. you know, now I'm only left with a handful of friends, like you guys from Poland and a couple of other friends, and that's it. So there's a price to pay for everything. So the question is, are you prepared to pay the price? I think that's the element mm. for any any photographer who, you know, wants to mm. climb that scale really quickly. Um, mm. Bonus is, I would also say, knowledge is king. Um, okay. These days, the internet, you can get a lot of knowledge from a lot of great photographers all over the world. Um, so I would definitely recommend that they do that. And number three, I believe, um, what they say, would say in Italian, passione, passion. Um, they mm. need to have blood running through their veins where, you know, you really need to have that strong ethic of, of work and are creating images that really, really, really stand out. Uh, it's sounding though like, but in a good way, that it's a very uh, demanding business and industry. So for the photographers who are maybe in it just trying to get the quick money, it's, it's not something that's going to be able to be sustainable for them. You really need to have your heart, your soul, dedication, as you say, and the passion for it. Correct, correct. Uh, and I yeah. think um, a, a lot of photographers who maybe think that they can come in quickly and, and make some serious money is really hard because a, a lot of the serious money comes in once your brand takes off. Um, you, can't, right. you can't come into an industry thinking you're going to make a whole heap of money immediately because really, where's your brand? The only way to, to accumulate mm -hmm. a lot of customers is you have to be super cheap. So we all got to start somewhere. So, you know, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with being super cheap because, you know, you're building your brand, but that's the only way to mm -hmm. do it. You can't, you can't go from zero to 200 um, immediately. So um, that's the whole idea is the fact that, you know, they really need to consider, um, you know, if they want to make a lot of money, they'd have to build build building blocks is the way to go so patience can you know being consistent in the hard work and it's going to come out going to come through eventually i think that's an important message to stress for anybody just kind of starting out who's watching this and is chomping at the bit to get to be the star photographer already be patient it takes time it takes time uh, sometimes. sometimes well look I, I, um, one thing maybe sorry, I forgot to, yeah sorry one thing i forgot to mention is the fact that um what we always need to consider is you'd rather shoot 50 weddings at 10 or twelve thousand dollars than 100 mm -hmm. weddings at $1,000. So they're little things that photographers need to t take into consideration, no doubt. Okay, wow. This is a topic we'll come back to, you know, building the business and, and marketing and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to jump back to uh, the quality of your images and, and the award-winning shots that you're able to produce. And I just want to ask you kind of what goes through your mind? Like, how do those come about, uh, your award-winning shots? Are you like going out there and saying, okay, I'm, today I'm going to get an award-winning shot or do they just kind of turn up? Like, wh wh how does that happen? Um, look, it's half and half, probably actually 75%. Um, the vision is clear in my head way before I've even turned up on the day. The other 20, okay. the other 25 just happen um, on the day. Mm -hmm. So I guess mm -hmm. with my style, I do incorporate a lot of props with that involves setting up. So you can see how it involves uh, pre-organizing things. So you can see the ideas already been in my head. 
Um, mm. You know, the other 25% is relative to, to the bride and groom. So the, mm. how I get those ideas, Eugene, man, it's just crazy, crazy stuff. Um, <laughs> you know, um, a, a lot of the photos just come individually with each bride and groom when I ask them a few questions about themselves. You know, you have mm. your, your clients who are very quirky. You have your clients who are very fun. You have your clients who are very serious. So it's about getting, uh, getting the best out of them and creating a little story, a narrative, mm that is very relative to them. Like for instance, you know, I see an image behind you there that I photographed um, in the squares and I'm sure a lot of viewers can see that. Um, Mm -hmm. That lady is an artist and and she basically said to me, turn me into my art and that's her art piece. So there you go. Yep, this one here, one second, we'll let them see. Exactly. Wow, that's printed really well, that looks amazing. That's great. So as as you can see from that photograph, um, I turned her into art, I turned her into shapes, but the idea was in yeah. my head way before. So, um, okay. yeah, works really well. Wonderful. Just for our viewers, I got to do a little product plug. This is our um, D-Bond, stacked D-Bond metal print, uh, but a beautiful portrait, beautiful portrait by, by uh, Maro there. Uh, so you were talking, yeah, you're talking about telling the story, bringing the subject to life. That's kind of a question I wanted to ask too then. What in your mind separates like an award-winning photo from just kind of a typical typical shoot photo? Um, look, there isn't one thing, Eugene. It's, it's a, 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 I guess, a collection of a lot of things. Um, the, mm-hmm. image, the image has to have impact immediately. And okay. I find the best way or a good way or one of the ways of creating impact is color. Second mm-hmm. is shape and form. And third is narrative. Mm-hmm. So, you uh-huh. know, you, you got to have a photograph that can be very bold in its statement that makes it, uh-huh. in, that makes it easier for the, really easy for the viewer to see what statement you're creating. So okay. uh, it has to be very bold in what it's, what it's, it's telling you, but it's got to have uh-huh. a narrative behind it. Now, if it's got a narrative okay. and all your techniques are there and all your skills, your basic photographic skills are there, there is no reason uh-huh. why you couldn't get an award. Okay, so all you photographers out there, Maro has laid out a blueprint that you can follow. If you're gonna venture out and think to yourself, I wanna get an award winner today, that's a nice blueprint you can follow, factors you can aim for. Maro, earlier you had mentioned how the industry is just so crowded, like when you're getting started, it's just, it's extremely crowded. It's hard to expect to get so uh, well-known so quickly. Uh, So I'm gonna ask head on then, what is something, you mentioned cheap, uh, being cheap. What are some things that, photographers can do coming in today to help separate themselves from this mass of photographers? Well, I think it, it really comes down to the, the plan that each photographer wants to do. But I, I tend to find at the moment, um, the one of the most important things is marketing, um, social cool. media, all the above. Now, if you don't have the skills to do it, you need to have the funds to, to pay someone to do it for you. So um, Mm -hmm. unlike many years ago, where it would have been more so word of mouth and taking care of your customer and quality, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. the best way to get the customer in at the moment is being a social media guru. If you can um, have a a little marketing team that can reach Mm -hmm. as many brides as possible, who is very clever Mm -hmm. with, Mm -hmm. with Facebook, Instagram, and the way you tag and all the above, um, Mm -hmm. you know, and, That is probably at the moment, I think probably the most important thing. Best words of advice to to anyone starting out is um, have your own little marketing team or someone that you can pay to do Mm -hmm. it. Um, Everyone fancies themselves as a great great marketer. And I used to think that too, until you actually meet someone in the industry and that blows you away, basically. (laughs) That's for sure. Okay. So get a marketing team. It's very solid advice, especially as you say, with social media, well, look, whether it's a, what I mean by marketing team, whether it's just um, someone who's in the marketing industry who can help you, um, I think mm-hmm. that's, that's, a, that's a key element to really sh- um, okay. Appeal, okay. appeal to a, a very, very wide and broad range of, of, of uh, brides and grooms. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, you offer print products in your studio. And, uh, why do you do this? And what are the advantages of offering printed products as a professional wedding photographer? Offering print products basically... Uh, creates your longevity in in your studio. You're investing in your studio. Um, what more of a better way to upsell and make money to ensure that your studio will be here 20, 30 years later? Um, I, I've, I come from an era of film, you know, guys. Like um, mm. I went through a period in 2005 where, or 2003 where I'd gone to school for five years and four years in photography part-time and then someone turning up and saying, okay, whatever you've learned 
throw that out the window because digital's here. So I've, I've had to go from one extreme to another myself. So yeah. it's been a crazy ride. There's no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. Very crazy ride. You talk about how print products and, and things can really help and sustain a business as a professional photographer. So why is it that you sometimes find photographers who kind of downplay the need to offer printed products? Very simple, purely, purely knowledge. Them not knowing what their next door neighbor okay. photographer is doing and how much they have in their bank account. Um, you know, I, I think the key element, I guess, for everyone as a photographer, you know, as artists, we all say, oh, we do it for the passion. Um, we do it for, you know, because uh, we love doing it. Money doesn't really um, concern me too much. But, mm. you know, an artist can't send their kids to a school if they can't make money. It's that simple. So mm. in a way, um, and I always say this to a lot of younger photographers out there, is creating albums, selling um, uh, enlargements, portraits, is pretty much uh, passing go and collecting $200, just like on a Monopoly board. So <laughs> if you're not doing it, you're not playing Monopoly properly. And you know you can't win when that's the case, no doubt. I love that. That's brilliant. <laughs> do you, Now, I'll just talk about print products, but do you offer any digital options uh, in your studio through your brand? Um, uh, going back five years, I would say no, 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 no. Um, I've always mm-hmm. been a strong believer of to protect the brand. Um, I don't mm-hmm. want anyone else printing my product or completing mm-hmm. my product or fi- giving the client mm-hmm. a finished product because really mm-hmm. that's what you're doing, guys. Photographers out there that if you hand out uh, your, your, your images um, and not print them, you're sort of giving people a half product that's not a true understanding of, of your brand. So, you know, going back five, six years, I would be screaming up and ranting and jumping up and down and even thinking to myself, how dare you even ask that question? But the digital era as time has progressed has changed. So um, Mm -hmm. for the moment, what I do, and I think a lot of photographers um, would be good in following this, would be that um, you should offer a print product. And once the client has purchased that, that product, then they also get the option to have that as a digital file. Why? Because you've completed the product, you've turned it into a piece of art, just like the image you see behind you, right? And it's ready for the world to see it in its best possible form. Um, you know, not a form where a customer can take it to Office Works or Office Depot and print it themselves on a paper that six months later is going to fade or you've, you've spilt a coffee on it and um, it, it looks like, you know, it's turned into a sepia print. So, you know, really mm-hmm. at the end of the day, your print products are the most everlasting piece of art that you can give your customer and for their generation and their, and their future as well. Okay. That was so brilliantly put and, and I'm appreciating, I appreciate you touching on how you can use digital because even here as a printing lab you know we cannot deny the world that we live in today and how digital is here and it's only going to get more and more uh, of a factor so uh, as much as we preach print it'd be a disservice to make people feel like they should exclude digital completely so Marl gave you a very good very good advice on how to use digital and how to use it properly if you're a professional photographer out there because it might not be the best idea to complete and ignore it completely either uh, so that was, that was uh, wonderful. Thank you, Maro. Now, if we come back to the products in your studio, if you don't mind, what is kind of one of or some of the best selling products that you have well, that you offer? At, at the moment, guys, um, obviously the Enphoto 12 by 18 album um, is going mm-hmm. gung ho here in, in Melbourne. Um, we're selling it like hotcakes. I hope you guys know what the word hotcakes oh. means, yeah? Um, oh yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. Uh, we're getting really, really great reviews. Um, people love the fact that it's a nice long horizontal album so we're opting to go the horizontal uh, 12 by 18 album people are loving the surfaces they're very modern Um, Mm -hmm. so at the moment the 12 by 18 the one that I've got here right here with me at the moment beautiful box even with the Mm -hmm. uh, with the photograph on the cover and as you can see the presentation is just amazing and that's the album cover there as well Um, I tend to find guys that this is a going to be a good uh, good future for the studio and um, very Mm -hmm. lightweight where it looks quite modern in beautiful modern houses. So at the moment, one of our biggest products, guys, is 
the good old 12 by 18 album, no doubt about that. Excellent. And you said that the, the collection was the uh, exclusive collection, yes? Uh, yes, it is. Sorry, guys. Um, I, only, I only work yep. with, uh, with uh, sizing. So, yes, the exclusive is the way to go. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Um, but, yeah, but, sorry. Absolutely. Go on, Eugene. Go for it. No problem. And we'll, we'll, put, we'll put the information uh, below if you guys uh, want to be inspired by that product you can, so you can find out what you need. But that's the collection where you can get that 12 by 18 size. You can find out more information about all this stuff uh, on our website. Uh, so speaking of Enphoto, uh, Mauro, what is it about us that caught your eye and wanted you to have, you know, try us in the beginning? Well, I guess, you know, like photographers out there, there's a lot of us. And there's also now these days a lot of album manufacturers where years ago, you know, mm -hmm. um, I never had the option of, of even considering a, an album manufacturer in Poland or in England or wherever mm -hmm. you were, where now, you know, the world's opened up a lot. And I guess mm -hmm. what separates the studio, and I am very proud of this, is the fact that you get a one-on-one -on -one service and you mm -hmm. get to speak to a real human back there. So, you know, the one thing that really drew me to end photo wasn't just their amazing quality, amazing printing, um, you know, amazing options, different size albums. Um, wasn't just that, it was the fact that when I was speaking to people there, they cared and it was a one-on-one -on -one service, like it was a little family business. Now, if you can mm. offer that in photography and you can receive that with your album manufacturer, you can't go wrong, you can't go wrong at all. Yeah, and we like to stress that too. We do think that's something unique for us, that when clients uh, sign up with us, they are assigned their own you know, advisor that will help them, that they can contact every step of the way. Um, so that the service is kind of what kept you around. The products caught your eye, the service is kind of what's keeping you around along with the product's quality. Uh, if we go back to albums, I'm going to focus directly on albums now. Uh, I know a lot of photographers, when they hear the word album, their eyes kind of light up and they just think of how... how uh, arduous it can be to produce an album and time consuming. What do you think are some of the biggest challenges photographers face, particularly wedding photographers, uh, when designing a album? I think the, the, the hardest thing for any photographer is to convince a bride and groom to invest more in an album than what they were anticipating. I think that's the hard, that's one that. of the hardest things because at the end of the day, um, you know, we need to sell an album that they're gonna cherish forever and that they can afford. So I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges for photographers at the moment is the fact that, you know, they need a product that can really stand out and people can really see the investment in, in, that, in that product. And how do you go about tackling that challenge? Um, best way, guys, I believe, um, and, and only working from experience, is the fact that spending time with the customer, spending several hours designing the album together, building a relationship, getting them excited about the product, getting them excited about their own wedding album um, and how they see it and how much time you put in and effort that you put into their album really can excite a bride and groom and, and make them really feel that they're super unique. Um, and that's really, really important. And I wanna focus on style of, of photographer style now. Um, you know, as I said, Mauro, you have numerous awards and accolades. You're well respected in the industry. You have a very unique and powerful style with your photography. How important do you think it is for a photographer to find a style? And what can a photographer do to find theirs and really turn it into a powerful brand? Well, I guess to find their style, they need to develop their style in the sense of being in the industry for at least a good two, three years where they can find themselves and see what appeals to them. I guess it's always passion driven. What we do, like I mentioned, you know, is, is always very passion driven because if you're really liking the style that you're photographing, you're going to really excel in it instead of doing something that you don't want to do. So I'd, mm. I'd probably say that step one and one of the most important things is, um, is finding a little style that's, like I mentioned earlier, that's unique, that you love doing. And um, you'll find that that's always a good little recipe to go forward. Okay. Another concern that I hear a lot of photographers have, or many photographers having, is they worry that they're going to get clients that just don't click with them, that are just going to try and get as much as they can out of them for as little cost, and just kind of cause them a lot of problems and more stress than they do anything else. So what, are, what can be done, or what are things that you do to make sure that you find the right clients? 
Well, look, I guess, you know, finding the right client has to work with both the customer and the photographer. Um, mm. uh, I guess my warning to, to um, photographers is if you can't get along with them when they first walk into the studio, you're probably best off not shooting it. But, however, I can say that because I'm at the liberty knowing that there's going to be another customer behind, behind them wanting that date. Um, mm-hmm. So I think the key secret, um, if you have customers that come in that are wanting everything for a cheaper price and, and you know, you feel that you're not going to get along with them, but, you know, you're not at the liberty of turning back and thinking, you know what, I don't want to shoot this, then if, if you are going to shoot it, you have to get down to their level to see what makes mm-hmm. them tick give them what they want and be firm on your price. So then they understand that what they're paying for is also the quality side too. So um, a lot of it comes down to meeting the customer way beforehand, quite a few times, and um, Mm -hmm. giving them a little bit of knowledge and understanding about what your product is and why it's that little bit more expensive and why they're paying a little bit more because of the quality. And what we always have to remember as photographers, and this is where a lot of photographers fail to to remember, is the fact that a bride and groom get married most of the time once. So how do they know exactly what what they're looking for when they do this once? So it's up to you as a photographer to educate them. And by the way, Mm -hmm. if you get married the third time, it's free of charge here at Design by Mario Photography. Oh. All righty. So, <laughs> if, they, if they can't if they can't get it right the first time, they can't get it right the second time. Well, I'm going to reward them with free wedding photography on their third wedding. All righty. <laughs> That's a very like a uh, wonderful perspective though. That people usually only get married once, so it's of course their first time when they see a wedding photographer and going through that process. Of course, it's all new to them. Hopefully, it remains you know a one time thing. Uh, so yeah, just being there, educating them, very good advice. Thank you for that, Maro. Uh, when we come to advertising and marketing a professional photography studio wedding one, so that people can get to the point where they are sure they have somebody behind the client they're not so happy with, what is like the most important factor for a professional wedding photographer to successfully market and advertise their studio? I guess there's a lot of avenues with the marketing side. I, I think you know the key secret is to pretty much have your images have a complete broad reach with as many brides and grooms as possible. You know, I think the Mm. whole idea these days is the fact that, you know, in order for customers to book you, they need to see you. So, you know, Mm. my theory has always been um, try to get out there to as many brides as possible. And from there, Mm. you're going to get some hits and you're going to get some misses. So, you know, I think the, the law of probability of appeal to a lot of customers will mean that you'll have more customers coming in the door. Now, how do you appeal to a broad range of customers? And that obviously obviously comes into your marketing strategy and how much mm. you're prepared to spend on how big and broad you want your market. So once you've wor- worked out that you know, uh, you, you'd like to spend double your marketing and appeal to double your brides, then it's about refinement and seeing where, once you are getting customers in the door, which ones um, are working or tend to book you a lot more? Are they clients that are in the middle range customer clients or more in the higher range of, um, of, of uh, spending? So it's important then to delve in deeper and seeing you know, sometimes certain regions of, of um, uh, geographic sides of the city, um, you tend to appeal to more than other sides of the city. So there's a lot of trends that you need to delve into and and keep asking the question, okay, so why did this customer come in? Did she come in because, um, you know, her friend told her or is my style tend to be more appealing to the people in the city on the south side of of the town or the north side Mm -hmm. of the town? So you've got to keep asking yourselves those questions and refine, refine your marketing. I want to address, since we're talking about advertising and marketing, I want to address, of course, the big elephant in the room these days, and that is social media. How, I know the answer I'm going to get here, but I I want to ask it all the more because of that. How important is social media for a wedding photography studio? Very, very important. It's it's actually the, the best way to get your name out there. So, you know, social media, people regard social media as you posting images, and I think that's great. Um, you know, social media is, is, is one of those platforms that 
um, you can immediately appeal to a bride. All you need to do is mm. is basically um, let them see one image that they really love, and next thing you know, they're following you. <clears throat> so mm. it's not hard to build a following that way. Mm. So I would always recommend a lot of photographers out there to to make sure they keep posting a lot of their images, tag them properly, tag them properly mm. from everything from the shoe designer all the way to the underwear designer to the dress designer. Um, to the reception venue that you're dealing with. So you have a broader market there. So that works well with, with Instagram. Um, same, mm -hmm. with, same with Facebook, where you build your audience. Mm -hmm. So audience building is mm -hmm. really important. The easiest and quickest way to build your audience is to have paid advertising. So mm -hmm. you know, I then recommend um, photographers who, wanna, who really want to build their business up quite quickly is to invest money into, um, into obviously, uh, Know, selling, well, not selling, but um, um, investing money into social media that way. And okay, for the paid advertisement. Yes, paid advertisement, but try not mm. to do it yourself because there's always a marketing person out there that has better knowledge than you. You know, I thought I was mm. really good at it until I actually met people in the industry who could create algorithms for me, um, who who okay. could, who could um, you know, really home in on a customer that um, is a higher end customer, someone who's prepared to spend mm. more money. Um, and these are little things that Facebook are able to to really home in on and and geographically okay. and also geographically mm. home in on. There's no doubt. Mm. So you you would uh, you say it would be a, a worthwhile investment for a photographer to reach out to maybe m someone who's more of an expert in social media advertising to produce some of these powerful and efficient Facebook social media ads. Let me say in general, because that's my next question too. Uh, there are many social media platforms out there these days. Do photographers, wedding photographers, need to address all of them equally, or are there some that are more important than others? Maybe maybe Instagram is more important than Facebook. Maybe Instagram and Facebook are. How does how do you see that? The the jungle of social media. Um, I must admit, yeah. they're all they're all just important as each other. And and as we know, okay. when you're walking through a jungle. Um, you never know when there's a spider or a snake around. And, you know, you've got to regard those spiders as snakes as that customer you could have lost. Um, so yeah. that's where I believe all platforms are very important. Everywhere, you know, the little insects like um, Twitter and, you know, um, the slightly bigger insects, um, you know, for instance, like Pinterest. And then, yeah. you know, you've got to look out for that lion, which is Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> Which is the uh, which is the uh, you know the the puma. So mm -hmm. you know they're all important. They all um, serve a, a good purpose, and we need mm -hmm. we need to keep our minds open to all platforms. Um, even now mm -hmm. with the younger children, you know, if you want to build an audience, um, things uh, things like uh, you know Snapchat, TikTok, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know. Why not start building your, your audience with, with younger kids that are 18, 19, who maybe in three or four or five years are going to get married? So, you know, there's a lot of different avenues for different marketing tools out there. And, and that's why it's a jungle for me. So I leave it mm. for the professionals. And if you can afford a marketing team um, or at least someone in the marketing industry that can guide you and be your guide through that jungle, then get, mm. the, get that guide. Get that guide out there. Wonderful advice, and sorry for all you guys watching out there, and for you as well, Mar, you saw me getting giddy like a little schoolgirl. I'm a word guy, and I just loved your metaphor <laughs> with the jungle, and you just kept going with it. I was like, yes, this is lovely. <laughs> it's so beautiful, so brilliant. <laughs> so, <laughs> the next big topic I want to jump into is print products, but to kind of transition, I want to close off this topic about social media and advertising, and I want to ask you, like, if you are a photographer who wants to offer print, products and be successful with that is it important to showcase photos of your work in print products and advertise that on your channels and your website like how does that work well it's basically um you know let's face it when when um you're dealing with a couple it's it's the bride that is the spender and the consumer mm -hmm. so okay. um i always tend to find that you know having a studio that is fully equipped with great wall portraits, whether they're canvas, whether they're metallic, great albums in the studio that they can feel, they can see, that they can touch. The same way mm -hmm. as um, every time we go to a store shopping for clothes, you know, right. um, you never not try a, a jumper on 
um, you're not going to buy a jumper without trying it on first. So a client mm -hmm. isn't going to buy an album if they can't touch it or feel it even from the first time from when they walked in. So, you know, to how successful is, is uh, print products, it's super important and successful to have because that's a good mm -hmm. avenue for, for us all as photographers to make an additional income. So, you know, mm -hmm. we all need that and, um, and it's important. And what we all need to remember as photographers is what we're doing is when we're photographing a person, we're telling people their life story. And if you don't print it in an album or mm -hmm. if you don't print it on the wall, then that story is lost because after we're gone, the only thing that we have left is the print product. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're talking about appealing to future generations the same way an architect mm -hmm the same way an architect would, would build a house that is there for, or, a, um, or a building that's been there um, that's built 200 years later. It's that, that iconic uh, building is always there for future generations to see. Same mm -hmm. theory is really we're modern day architects ourselves, but only in a visual format. So look at it, mm -hmm. in, look at it in the respect of uh, an image that we're gonna produce for a customer today Will be seen from will be seen by their kids kids so how mm. powerful is that now if you take that yeah. away from photographers what do we have left so you know for anyone out there who is not um anyone out there who's not producing print or not producing an album i would strongly recommend not only for the financial reasons but for artistic reasons and for future reasons for your work to be noticed 200 years on right mm -hmm. um start printing, start having albums, and that's really important. And on that note, you know, you do run into some photographers, even today, who uh, downplay the importance of offering print products. Why do you think that is? Why are there photographers out there that are like that when you say it can be so beneficial to you and your clients? Well, I'd, I'd ask those photographers to just uh, to, to sort of pretty much keep their options open and never, and I've, never, I've always learned now as I get older in the industry is, Never leave things to chance. If you're seeing that mm. your, your uh, competitors are selling albums, that's for a reason. And that reason obviously is that, um, you know, obviously it allows the studio to have an, an additional income. So, you know, the people, photographers out there that probably don't feel that they can uh, produce an album, what we always need to remember is that album manufacturers have great easy software, that easy, great software that they can just drop and drag images in there. Um, mm -hmm. So it's easy for them to produce an album. If they don't have the skills to do it, then they can easily, um, you know, contact, uh, you know, Enphoto and you guys where you can help them produce a wedding album. So that's yeah. an another good reason is the fact that a lot of the times these photographers maybe don't have the knowledge or maybe a little bit scared because let's mm -hmm. face it, guys, if we're scared of something, we're going to dismiss it, aren't we? So yeah. um, really, I think, you know, if we cannot be scared, guys, and, and take that, that uh, leap of faith and jump into it, mm -hmm. you'll then find several months later that you're thinking, wow, my bank account looks better and why didn't I do this earlier? And everyone's bank yeah. account looks better because everyone's happy. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to expand on something you mentioned, you know, do my job, sell my company. We do have a wonderful platform, all free online, called our InDesigner uh, Pro. And even within this software, our InDesigner Pro Smart, version it will design your album for you automatically in a matter of minutes uh this is you know a style that you can find in some of the leading album designing softwares we have it too now online available for all of our clients for free so as maro suggested we will help you to design an album uh, so that's a worry you no longer have to fear about um but sometimes photographers will say, if you approach them and ask, why don't you offer like an album or, or, or print products, they will come back and say, well, my clients only want digital. If there comes a time when somebody comes to your studio tomorrow and they say, I just want the digital, how do you handle that? What do you do to try and persuade them to maybe consider a print product? Well, see, what you've got to remember is, again, like I mentioned before, brides and grooms that come in, they, they get married once. So when they say they, the word that they want the digitals, Ask them the question, delve into it just that little bit more because you'll then find that the customer who's relating to the word digital may mean that all they're wanting is in lower res images that they want to um, spread out on social media. A lot of the mm. times the bride and groom may not want the high res files. So, you know, it's important that you chat with your customer and see what they really mean by that word digital because as we know, mm. you, they're getting married only once. 
So they don't really know how to use the lingo. So for us, the lingo of using the word, oh, my digital files, could it mean they just want low res images to, to spread around um, to their friends, which is fantastic. So we can do that. But as photographers, that means that still gives us an open window to, to uh, have the high res images in the studio and to produce proper, complete, finished products from the time we shoot to the time we print. And images that are mm -hmm. going to obviously create a better brand for that person as well too, because you're finishing a product from um, really from shooting, um, uh, retouching, and printing. And as you mentioned before, how easy software is these days to, to make images look good. And you know, I've worked with a lot of the end photo software, and man, it makes my photography look even better. You know, not that it's, and to be honest, maybe it's N photo that makes my photos look better. It's maybe not even my work. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so, but um, well done. It's it's a good it's a good system to have. But going back, on, all jokes aside, going back to what you were saying, Eugene is, you know, sometimes when clients come in and they use the word digital, they might just want some images for for their grandma in um, you know overseas. So sit mm -hmm. down and speak to your customer and see what they really mean by that that, that word. Okay. A common theme I'm seeing here is just communicating with your clients and, you know, leading them and educating them when it's appropriate. So uh, to all your photographers out there, if you have clients coming in screaming for digital, that doesn't mean that you have to push them out the door. Just sit them down, talk with them more, talk it out and educate them on what they might be missing. Uh, as Maro says, they might not even know that they might not even know what they really want. So uh, that's a very important thing to remember as well. Maro, it has been great talking with you. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to speak with us in our professional photography audience. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Eugene Nagovietsky with M Photo Studios, wrapping it up here with award-winning wedding photographer Maro can tell me. That's going to do it for today, folks. Keep checking up on our YouTube channel and our other related content. We'll have more coming for you all the time. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>